Welcome, my name's Anthony King. I just wanted to say that this series is based upon my book, Living in a Bubble, which is available on paperback and Amazon Kindle. If you want to know more, you can find it on my website, anthony-king.com. Thank you. My name's Anthony King, and welcome back to my video series about mild autism spectrum disorder in adults, based on my book, Living in a Bubble. Let's continue from where we left off in our last video together. Living with Asperger's forming relationships. Many on the spectrum are perceived as loners by choice and living in a solitary, almost monistic way. Even though this might be the case for some, for many this is not the case. It's pretty obvious that to interact successfully with people we need to have been trained and taught appropriately through upbringing and in addition have the ability to learn. The challenge is that, in addition to perception and communication challenges, some people on the spectrum often miss out on this because they are too busy prioritising survival. Many times also being subjected to bullying, rejection and sometimes even ridicule. Already finding it challenging to understand what others think or feel, some are significantly disadvantaged. Often, by adulthood, they can be traumatised by past experiences and mistakes, challenged with understanding and communication, affection and love, which can cause major problems later with finding a partner and achieving a long-term successful relationship. Some people on the spectrum might also have issues with expressing emotions and understanding what love is and how to experience and express it. However, Plato himself, the philosopher, said Love is a serious mental disease, so it might be the case that none of us understand love, but that people on the spectrum have a challenge doing the things that people expect of them. It can be confusing for most people, but a gigantic mounting to climb for autistic people. Typical and obvious displays of affection are not obvious to many with autism, which means that this can cause friction in a relationship and confusion. A hug might be perceived as a threat when it is in fact a display of affection, for example. The instinctive reaction to that gesture might be perceived as a rejection or an insult by a partner, leading to confusion and bewilderment when it is nothing of the sort. In addition to this, if a person hasn't practiced how to act or they haven't been taught how to be in a relationship, they may turn to Hollywood or television and copy, leading to calamitous results development and escalation of relationships. Understanding and interpreting the subtle cues and flirting involved in a partner wanting to change the state of relationship, say from dating to serious relationship partner, are often skills that are not intuitive for people with ASD. This can be extremely confusing and frustrating for both parties and seen as a sign of rejection when it's nothing of the sort. The irony is that they might take this as rejection when it's actually extreme consideration for them in a confusing situation. One of the difficulties for people on the spectrum is that it can be tough for us to interpret someone's intentions, so they would need to be direct to make a point, otherwise it might get lost, ironically, in politeness. The individual on the spectrum might really want that affection and want to know that a lover feels that way but they can't see it and it goes over their head. We often can't always read romantic signals that are blatant but still not direct in your mind. Another consideration is that we are often not as experienced in relationships and take a longer time to learn things as we've probably started being concerned about relationships and romance later in life than many others. Recuperating after dates and social interaction, somebody on the spectrum might feel exhausted by having to try and understand and interpret body language and all without the usual social skills. However, this doesn't mean that they don't want to go out on a date. It just means that they might need certain environments to flourish better or with certain particular types of people and then have recuperation time afterwards. Expressing love. People on the spectrum might be considered bad at expressing love and affection. I would add that this is in the conventional way. We often express it in other ways too, and if we learn what we must do or are simply asked, we can do the other things too. 
I understand that many on the spectrum are not so good at expressing what is on the inside and can sometimes shut down at important moments when our partners probably need feedback or an emotional reaction. And this must be tough for them if they aren't educated in what to do or have an understanding of autism and the behavior of people on the spectrum. Great in relationships too. Some people on the spectrum are often not involved in manipulation. They're loyal, honest, and this can even help in a work environment and not just romantic relationships. A pioneering company in Denmark gave people with autism a chance to apply their skills to jobs from IT to product testing. A UK newspaper reported the headline, Better, Faster and No Offence Politics. The company with the autistic specialist. Office politics and cheating are not behaviours often attributed to those on the spectrum. If they are in a relationship with you, you can probably feel secure in the fact that the amount of energy and effort it might take to meet somebody else to even be in a position to cheat would probably not be anywhere near worth the stress and hassle. Being perceived as aloof and standoffish. Many people on the spectrum are perceived as aloof and standoffish, initially at least. Not always, but a lot of times. If I got a dollar for every time I'd be told in my life, at first I thought you were rude, but you're really actually nice. I would be a billionaire for sure. <laughs> this has happened all my life. I certainly must look a certain way because I am perceived in a way which is quite different to my real personality. Maybe you feel the same too. Social imagination. Social imagination is the idea that we can imagine and predict what others are often thinking and the way that they will or may behave in a certain situation or to certain stimuli, i.e. words and actions. Another way of thinking about this is the idea of flexible thinking. People on the spectrum often have a strict routine or set of behaviours. They may walk a certain route home they may find changes to this challenging. The unfamiliarity can cause distress. Consequently, this may affect the ability to predict a certain usual comfortable outcome, which is usually expected and thus cause problems. This difficulty in predicting accurately what might happen when a factor or factors people, circumstances or situations change can often, what is often perceived as aloofness or standoffishness. Social imagination, understanding, challenges might mean that people on the spectrum may find it hard to 1. Cope with meeting new people or in new unfamiliar habitats and surroundings. 2. Have challenges putting themselves in other people's shoes at times and imagining the world from someone else's perspective. 3. Might find it challenging to work out that other people may have different thoughts, feelings and perspectives to theirs. 4. Find it hard to interpret others' thoughts, feelings, actions, intentions, and motivations. 5. Predict outcomes that others see as obvious or inevitable. 6. Prepare for change and various alternative outcomes. Consequently, all of these challenges can add up to being perceived as aloof and standoffish. However, these are obviously only subjective opinions. Thanks for joining me today. We'll continue with more in our next video. See you then.